Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. My name is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Malkwe of Living Streams International. We meet behind the trade fair behind Zenith College. Make a date with us on Sundays and Wednesdays. But today I'm bringing to you a very powerful topic through Graphic Online, Matters of Faith. And I'd like to um, caption my morning thoughts, Party Liberated. Oh, what kind of English language is this? I just remember the story. It's my, it's my grandmother. You know, my grandmother never really went to school. And um, so, I mean, her English language was very, very limited. And I remember one time uh, there was a party and people were invited, but I was not invited. And then when I came, then she was going to say, oh, you are not invited. But she said, oh, Ali <laughs> That means I was not invited. So this party liberated. In actual fact, I'm trying to say party invited. Now, um, in Luke chapter 5, verse, in Luke chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, there is something that, you know, Luke chapter 5 tells the story of uh, the failed fishermen at the lakeside called Genesaret, where they are told all night and then they are caught nothing. Now, mind my words, they had toiled, they had toiled, because Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, um, must, we, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. So he used the word we, the plural, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. But then when afterwards Jesus, you know, preached with his boat and all those things, then Peter, I mean, Jesus gave him a mighty drought of fish, amazing drought of fish, but you also have a mighty drought of harvest in, in your life. Now, there was something very interesting. When Peter got his harvest, there was something he did that was really, um, it, it left me with a very sweet smile on my face. The Bible says uh, immediately he, he caught a great drought of fish. Guess what he did? He invited his friends in another boat. He invited his friends in another boat to come haul the harvest in. He invited those friends to come and hold the harvest in. And for me, I was very, very, like I said, there was a nice smile on my lips, on my face when I read that. Why? Because he said, we have toiled all night. He didn't say, I have toiled all night and caught nothing. He said, I have friends. There are people who have been with me through the trenches. They've gone through all the, uh, the pains and the, and, 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 and the challenges with me. And now that I have had a harvest. He said, listen, I can't bring in the harvest alone. I need to invite them to my harvest. So what Peter was doing, he was inviting his friends he had told with to the harvest. You know, sometimes we, uh, when, when we, we make it or when, when we, we think that we have achieved success or we have achieved our goals or we have, we have hit a jackpot in terms of wealth or riches or whatever we call this thing, you know, sometimes you, you might be left with an attitude and you might be left with a very particular posture. You refuse to acknowledge those who you get the provider platforms for you to get to where you are. And, uh, and uh, it, is, it, is, it is something that I found very uh, profound. Now, I mean, Peter said, there are people who slaved with me. There are people who told with me. There are people who went through the disappointing times with me. It's time for my harvest. I am not going to leave them alone. I'm bringing them in to my harvest. I'd like to end here with a very um, interesting story, sad story, but holds lessons for us. Many years ago, I had the opportunity of um, meeting an old lady, and she was selling in one of the junctions of our city. And I'm not going to mention the place because you might know her. But this lady, I, I was driving. I just gone to the bank, and I was driving. And then uh, I got to the junction, and this lady came hobbling by, and then she had a small uh, pail with um, or a small pan, you get it, um, or uh, seven tree, a small seven tree with sweets on it. And the way she was hobbling, and when she came, I just looked at her quietly, and 
there was a bowels of compassion just run through me. And then I asked her, um, something just said, buy everything from her. And because, I mean, the, the, the level of compassion was overwhelming uh, for me. And not only buy everything to her, something just said to me, I mean, take all the money in the envelope and give it to her. And then ask her not to sell again. And so I asked her, my please, I can buy everything. Can I buy everything? She said, oh, please. And I gave her the envelope. He said, oh, it's too much. And she wanted to peel just what was necessary. I said, no, everything is yours. I said, madam, sit in the car. I want to take you home. Go drop you home. Never sell anymore. Every month, I will bring you uh, something in your home. So I drove to a suburb in, 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 our, in, our, in, our, in our city, in our town. I mean, it was uh, like a downtown area. And um, from that time onwards, I would be taking her money every month. Then she told me her story. And her story was, I mean, left me with tears. Now, she was young when she, uh, she had uh, two um, kids, uh, a son and a daughter uh, with her husband. And uh, the marriage broke, uh, they, they, they broke up and the marriage ended in disaster. Well, the man left for greener pastures somewhere in America, something like that. And, uh, I mean, um, after a while, I mean, he made it big. And then he said he wanted to come and pick the kids to give the kids a better lifestyle. Now, when um, she agreed, but he said the condition is when the kids come over, you're cutting off all ties with them. They ain't going to call you. You ain't going to write to them. And that's it. Life ends between you and the kids. Now, every, every mother who's been th to the labor ward would say no. But then this woman sat down and thought through it and said, if they are here with me, I'll be struggling. So why don't I rather send them out there and give them a better life? So she sent out the kids, and she never heard of them anymore. So, yes, she said to me, I have kids. I don't know where they are. I've never heard from them. They've never written to me and all that. Now, now sometimes I'll go there and just go and make the deposit and then sit and then chat with her for a little while. So they knew me in the uh, in, in a part of the corner. Then, here's a surprising thing. One time I got there, she was very ill and um, I mean, she died and she died of uh, cancer. So um, it didn't take too long. I mean, they had to bury her. But just before she died, I mean, she gave me a parcel and said, I don't know you, Reverend, and I don't know who else to trust, but please keep this. I know that one day my daughter is going to come by, and when she comes, give this to her. I said, I'll tell you what's in it. And that was a box of jewelry, and that is gold. I mean, very costly uh, gold. I mean, if, I, if you melt it or if I melt it, I mean, I don't, but she gave it to me for cost study. Now, it didn't take too long. Um, after a while, she'd be buried many years ago in, in an unmarked grave, you know. Um, then the um, daughter um, and the son, grown up, you know, now they were independent, and so they came down, and they came to look for their mother. And when they came to look for their mother, they were directed to me that their mother and I were close. So I remember we went to the, I went with them to the graveyard, and uh, we stood there. She was in tears. He was in tears. And when they just left, I brought them home. And then I took the parcel and I said, she said I should give this to you. And then you share with your son's daughter. So that is if your son has a daughter, you must share with her. If not, let him give some to his wife. And then when she opened the box, she was crying. And uh, she's like, oh, can we build a tombstone? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do that? It's too late. It's too late. See, there are people who made an investment in you, wherever you are. There are people who are part of your story, wherever you are. And so do not forget them. I mean, when the time comes and you're smiling and you're riding your chariots of praise and applause or celebration, and sometimes we, we, we forget that there are people who are part of our story. You know what? Um, Peter invited people to his party, I mean his harvest. Who are you also liberating to your harvest? Make sure you don't forget those people. Acknowledge them 
and find a way to let them become partakers of your harvest. See you later.